Hi guys, um, I'm Michael Cade. I'm a senior global technologist at, at Veeam Software. I sit in the product strategy team, so I get to speak to our product management guys, our product marketing guys, but most of all, the IT community. So I wanted to take this session to share some of the free stuff that we, we're doing at Veeam or what we've been doing and, and what we've had since we've really started. So very aptly um, named, the session is Community Edition and Beyond. I won't ever reference Buzz Lightyear again in the whole of this session. I was just saying to the guys about, just down the road though from, from where my uh, hotel is, there was actually a shop with some adult uh, Buzz Lightyear jumpers. And I very, very nearly uh, made the purchase. Just quickly about, about Veeam. So how many are Veeam customers in, in the audience? Sweet, so we don't really need to go into the, the 101. So, Everything that Veeam's doing over the last two years, but probably even further, has been, yes, everything's been a cornerstone around backup and replication and really focused around virtualization. But also, we've kind of branched out about how do we leverage more of the storage integrations that we have? How do we then orchestrate more? How do we take, take away them laborious tasks away from our IT operations on a daily basis? So orchestration is a massive part of that. Monitoring and analytics, a product that we have, Veeam One or Management Pack, we don't really talk about it enough, in my opinion. Um, but it gives us a great insight into what our backup engine's doing, but also what our front end is doing as well. And then allows you to give insight into what, what's ha actually happening. And again, for the last 11 years, Veeam's been very much focused in the virtualization world. And, but over probably the last two years, we've really concentrated on how do we broaden that platform and how do we do more? How do we protect those physical machines that absolutely have not gone away? How do we protect SaaS-based workloads? And how do we protect cloud, cloud instances? Anyway, let's get into the, the actual free stuff. So first of all, pretty much, no, every single product that Veeam has there is a free tier two, and there has been since day one. In fact, if we go right back to the inception of Veeam, the first product, and the show of hands if you ever used FastSCP, actually second product, um, but FastSCP gave us the ability to go into the vSphere data store and actually see the files and folders and all the configuration in there. And it was free, it allowed us to do that data store browsing that we now take for complete granted because we can. But that was really the start of how do we start lifting data from A to B and so on. But actually the first product was Veeam Monitor. There you go, little, little bit of knowledge for you. But yeah, you can see the, the interface and everything. But so where are we today? And that's continued over the last 11 years, right? Does anyone, has anyone installed the Community Edition? Okay, so less people. Basically, last year we, we made a big change around our licensing, our instance licensing model. The CPU socket one's still there, but we wanted to be more flexible. How can we give you an instance or a workload that lives today in vSphere and to, tomorrow in EC2, and how do you move back and forward depending on the requirements of the business? So we moved to this instance-based licensing. I'm not going to get into that because it's licensing, it's pretty boring and it's still pretty early and I want everyone to stay awake for the rest of the show. But those instances could be a virtual, they could be a physical, they could be a cloud and they're pretty much transportable between all of those different facets. But what Veeam Backup and Replication Community Edition allows us to do is gives you all of the functionalities to those 10 instances that we have in our standard edition, our paid for standard edition. But what 10 instances does, it really enables those really small businesses to actually adopt and actually have a backup strategy, but also home labs, think about home labs and, and data that we have on premises. So if you've got three, four, five laptops at home all running Windows, how do we protect those? How do we protect our sons and daughters and our wives' laptops? Um, so that, this is a real use case for that. One thing I'll mention here, and I'll, I haven't got the link, I didn't put it in, but we also, for the experts and other community programs, we have an NFR license. So that's a 365 day license. That will give you Enterprise Plus functionality. And yeah, that's, that will give you for 20 instances. But so into the standard, it still gives you the ability to instantly recover those VMs. So what we're gonna use is our vPower NFS painted technology, present that backup file and push that into the vSphere environment. The ability to directly restore those workloads from that VBK format into AWS, into 
um, Azure, back into vSphere, put into, into whatever, whatever format you want. And then finally, the one that I ha didn't touch on on the, the last slide is around data labs, and in particular, Secure Restore. So just to recap on what Standard Edition gives, so this is the bottom tier of our, our functionality, but ultimately it starts with that backup and replication. So obviously, yes, you get application consistency, agentless approach to those VMs. You get the ability to use quick backup, which is an ad hoc copy of your incremental um, or a quick backup of your machine. But also in there is this centralized management portal with VBR that allows you to replicate machines from A to B as well, all included in that same instance licensing. And then obviously the recovery. The recovery is the important thing. And this leads me into what's next or what, how, how else or people, how, how they should use this. In that if you decide that you're a Veeam customer today, but in a year's time, you're no longer a Veeam customer, one of the biggest things that we see, especially talking to other incumbents, is how do I, how do I migrate those vendor X, Y, or Z into Veeam format. And we're not, we're not doing that, or that's at least not on the roadmap that I've seen. But actually, we'd, we'd never want you to be in that position. So we'll, we've got the community edition, which will be able to open any of your historic Veeam backups for free, be able to do application level recovery, file level recovery, instant VM recovery, all of that good stuff on, that, on them machines. So if I just nip into what this Secure Restore is, has anyone heard of Veeam Data Labs or Secure Restore? Yeah, the Veeam guys all stick their hands up. So what this allows us to do is when we're in a restore process or a migration or some sort of recovery, we're gonna take that backup file, we're gonna present that to a mount server that's in a, a controlled, isolated environment, and that's gonna have our antivirus software on with the latest definitions. We're gonna mount that there. Out of the box, this then allows us to trigger a virus scan, an antivirus scan against that machine in an isolated fashion before we go through and return that back to wherever it needs to go or wherever we're recovering that to. So out of the box, we support Windows Defender because every Windows machine should have or has the ability to have Windows Defender, ESET, and also Semantic Protection Engine. So obviously all being well, the, there's no infections found, it's just going to recover that into wherever you've told that to do, vSphere, AWS, EC2, etc. But also, a second option, if something is found, but we've got a security team, maybe we're big enough that we've got time to go and spend time to troubleshoot as to why, that, why this is a problem, we're going to still recover it, but then we're going to disable the network adapters, kind of a safe mode, so then your security team can go into this and they can troubleshoot why and what, that, what the issue is. And then finally, if we don't have that, and there is just the one person in, that, in, your, in, the, in the basement looking after the whole IT system, we can just throw it away and go back to the next one. Think about ransomware. Think about how quick can we get the business back up and running. And this goes from Community Edition right the way through. This is the same software that you download, whether you're a paying customer at enterprise level or whether you're a 10-man shop in a, for a smaller company. So this is where I'll, I'll just nip back into what we're doing in terms of our backup file format and why we don't ever want you to have that concern when you, if you do come to the end of Veeam and you've decided that something vendor XYZ is better, we don't want you to have the issue of getting out or being able to recover. It's your data, it's nothing to do with us, and that's our big play or differentiator against those. So anything that we back up, whether that's virtual VMware, Nutanix AHV, probably shouldn't say that too loud here. Um, but any workload that we're backing up at that production primary source target, we back it up into a VBK format. VBK is our own file system, if you like, a file system within a file system. And then incrementally, we have our VIB file and we have a reverse incremental, should you, depending on what, what um, backup type you're using. But ultimately, what I'm trying to just get across is that, so we don't care about the Veeam repository, we don't care what disk that is. Um, the key thing is, is that whatever product, Veeam product you're using, we're going to back it up into a VBK format. And that gives us the, the flexibility and choice of where we recover that. So just to reiterate what that allows us to do is over on the left hand side, you've got all of the source coming in. And over on the right hand side, there are all the options that we've got to be able to recover that data into. So whether that's back into a vSphere environment, not, the, not even where we've initially taken that backup from, 
whether it's Hyper-V, whether it's an actual public cloud environment. So, yep, any Veeam backup, right? Doesn't matter. All, and whether you're using Community Edition or Enterprise Plus, it's all using that same VBK format. When it comes to replication as well, I touched on replication. I wanted to touch on, well, so I've had a lot of conversations probably since last VMworld really about VMware Cloud on AWS. So I wanted to give a, a bit of a shout out to it. So included in our community edition, but all the way through is the ability to actually replicate those, those VMs from on-premises into VMware Cloud on AWS. To be honest, Veeam sees that as just another vSphere cluster. We can do it that way in, if you're gonna use it that as your DR site, or we could do it the other way and we can pull the data out. But ultimately we see that as a different, as a, just another vSphere cluster. Now, let's say five years down the line, 10, 15, 25 years down the line, you don't want to go and install Community Edition, you're that fed up of Veeam, let's hope that's never gonna be the case. But we also included in the installation there is a, a Veeam extract utility, which allows us, if you think back to like WinZip, if we create a WinZip file, a compressed file on Windows 98 in 98, then we can still open that today using WinRAR or something else. This is, that's the best analogy that I can think of here, is that we can still open that backup file using this tool without having to install the, the Veeam backup and replication components. And this allows you to go in and extract all the data points out of there, the VMX file, the VMDK, everything around that. And then you do what you need to do with that. There's also a Veeam 1 Community Edition. So again, 10 instances. There's also an NFR license for this as well. And I don't want to run out of time, but this gives you a lot of... So we've always got a 30-day trial. If you don't run Veeam 1, this will give you insight into what your environment's doing. If you want some level of monitoring and reporting against your environment. Community edition is the low end and then you move into the other editions. And it's gonna give you a bit of insight into what your environment is doing. And that doesn't just mean um, your virtualization, that could cross over into your cloud and your agents as well. Let's say that you've only got two laptops at home. You probably don't want or need to go and install a full version of Veeam Backup and Replication Community Edition to manage those two. So there's also the agents for free as well. So a couple of years ago, we announced our endpoint, which is uh, yeah, probably about three years ago now. They're all still free, and they'll give you, give you the ability to, to protect those, your wife's laptop, your son, your daughter's laptop, and present them and back them up into whatever repository you like. So it can be a Veeam server, but it also could just be a USB drive or a NAS share at home. Another one, and this is probably more aimed at anyone that's probably in the reseller or partner community is around Veeam Backup um, Office 365. And we, so we have Veeam Backup for Office 365, which allows us to protect Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, and OneDrive for business. This gives us the ability to offer it out to the community, especially if you're demoing Office 365 on a daily basis and you're breaking things to show the power of Office 365, but also to upsell and, and push in the, the capabilities of, of backing up that SaaS-based workload. So there's also a free version of that, but there's also an NFR license for any the expert or any other um, like major um, community program that's out there. So I said these guys were in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So big shout out to some more um, V Brown Bag sessions. So a couple of Veeam guys. Anthony's gonna talk about infrastructure as code and how we've developed some stuff around that for using Terraform and Chef. Then you've got Joe and you've got Tim who will work, they're mostly talking, they won't talk about Veeam at all, I don't think, but they'll talk about more community and their life and, and how they've grown into the community, leverage the community, all of that good stuff. Final shout out, if you wanna know more about that backup file format and what we're doing around mobility, then I've got a session tomorrow, uh, no, Wednesday morning at 8.30. If you go into the Veeam party, it's okay to come and sleep in my session because it's at 8.30. Um, later on today, we're going to talk, Danny and Anthony are going to talk about some of the new stuff. And don't forget, I, if you haven't pre-registered, I think it's pretty full, but all we need is our, our badges. If you head over to that place um, tomorrow night, then we'll, we'll try and get you in. Free stuff, everyone loves free stuff. Um, 
The one thing I didn't touch on is Veeam Hub, which is our GitHub site. So anyone that's looking at using PowerShell or looking to leverage some of the automation around Veeam software, Veeam Hub is a really great resource that we're, we're obviously allowing the community to contribute to. And with that, before I get kicked off, that's all good. Thank you very much, guys.